Hello. Good morning. My name is not Dale. <laughs> I'm glad to be with you, though. I get to teach here not very many weeks of the year. Is that how his speech goes every week? Yes. I love Pastor Dale. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen, oh, amen, oh, amen. Oh, let me tell you how I got here today. Um, Pastor Dale knew he was going to be in Israel today, so he sat around and he thought, man, i got to get someone to speak. So he thought, I'm just going to get the best preacher in all of America to come preach. He called him up. He turned him down. <laughs> he looked at Joni and said, Joni, do you know? She said, get a good looking preacher. So he called the best looking preacher up in America. Would you preach for me? He turned him down. <clears throat> he said, I'll get a funny preacher. Called him up, turned him down. I was sitting in my office one day, and my assistant said, hey, there's a Pastor Dale on the phone. I said, what does he want? She said, he wants to know if you'll speak at People's Church on October 30. I said, well, <clears throat> I guess I can. I've turned him down three times already. <laughs> Maybe this is God. Maybe this is God. <laughs> we welcome you today. It's good to be in the Fellowship of the Redeemed. I'm just amazed that when we get together like this, how many different people show up in, in meetings like this. I mean, we have, we have people of different worldviews. We have Democrats. We have uh, Republicans. We have the unaffiliated, we have aristocrats, and we got alley cats. I mean, we got them all. But we're here. We're here. Some Baptists, some Methodists, Church of God, Assembly of God. I mean, we're all here. How does that happen? Some people from Nigerian descent, some people from Indian descent, some people from Asia. We welcome all of you that are watching online from all the way around the world. I know there's people watching from Great Britain right now and uh, South America and, and even the Central Valley. Welcome. Uh, welcome here. I mean, we got everybody. We got, uh, we got Gen Z. We got Gen X, Gen A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever. We got Gen A. We got um, the greatest generation that ever lived is in the room. Yeah, give them a hand. We're all here. Now, how in the world did we all come to this same room when we don't even hardly know each other, act like each other, eat the same food? I'll tell you why. We love Jesus. Jesus brought us to this room to get today, and thank God he did. I want to I drop in on a conversation that Jesus was having with a lady in John chapter 4. You know the passage quite well. Jesus is uh, going through Samaria, and he, he stops at this well. It's about noontime. He's really thirsty, and uh, nobody's with him. Mm, he's uh, sat down at the well. You know the woman at the well story. And he sat there, and he started talking to her, and she realized there's something different about this guy. There's a presence about him. She starts this conversation, and, and she realized, I'm talking to a man of God, it seems like, or a prophet or something. And she said, uh, hey, uh, I think you're a holy man or something. My people told me that we have to worship at this mountain right here. He said, no. Nah. I said, you got it wrong. It's, it's. And he said this verse. I want to just read this verse for you. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 23. He said, the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. When the true worshiper, somebody say true worshiper. When a true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him this way. Did you get that? The Father is looking for true worshipers True worshipers, not about a building, 
not about a denomination, not about a persuasion. No, it's, a, it's about worshiping in spirit and in truth. So if there is a true worshiper, there must be a false worshiper. Would, would Jesus look, he looked at this woman at that well and basically said, you're not, you're not the true worshiping group yet. You're not there yet, but if, if you take a drink from the well that I'm serving, you, you, if you take water out of the well here, you'll thirst again, but not from this well I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm talking about spirit of God. I'm, I'm talking about God. If you will just, you'll never thirst again. But if there is a, what is a false worshiper? This lady apparently was a false worshiper. She didn't know, he told her, you don't even know what you're worshiping. Could it, could it happen to us today that we're in this room and we're not in the category yet of being the true worshiper? We're still, well, we, we came because, well, I do that every Sunday. Well, that building, you know, it's a nice building. Wow, look what the Lord has done at people's, my goodness. Who wouldn't want to worship there? Uh, but Jesus is saying, no. Uh, I'm not talking about just showing up on a Sunday. I'm not, I'm not talking about just worshiping when you feel like worshiping. I, I'm talking about something that you have had an encounter with God. An encounter with God. How many have had an encounter with God? God wants us to have a lot of those. And I think that's what true worship is, is when we can worship and we can encounter God. Young people, if you don't, if you've not encountered God yet, don't stop until you do. I was smoking a joint one day, not recently, <coughs> when I was 19 years of age. I was doing everything wrong with my life. And I'm telling you, if it was wrong, I was living in West Texas, Littlefield, Texas, and I walked into this, I was stocking groceries in a grocery store, that's what I did, and this lady walked up to me, she was from the church, and she said, why don't you come to church with me? I said, no, I was about half high, and uh, that's, what you, that's what grocery stockers do, they get high and stock groceries. Uh, no emails, no emails. <laughs> she said, come on down to the church. She was like Joni. She was persistent. She just, come with me to church. And I said, well, tell me what kind of church and tell me, I mean, are there any girls in that church? <laughs> oh, yeah, we got plenty of ladies. I said, I'm here. I'm in. I'm 19 years of age. And I said, what kind of church is it? She said, Assembly of God Church. It's on 5th Street. I said, there's no Assembly of God Church on 5th Street. She said, yeah, I don't want to. I said, I walk this town all the time. It's a little video town. I, I know where everything is. There's no Assembly God church on that street. She said, there is. I said, there's a Slimly of God. I said, your letters have been burnt out in that sign for some time, and it says Slimly of God. I'm just glad the letters burn out in the right place on your Assembly of God church. <laughs> some of y'all catch that later. <laughs> but I went in. And I, I was just like that. I was just rowdy, just that way. And I went into this church. She lied. There wasn't any ladies there. There were a bunch of skinny people praying. They'd been praying for souls to be saved. And they were worshiping God. And I walked in there, and the preacher saw me. He said, hey, you look like you could use some prayer. I said, buddy, if you only knew, I need a lot of prayer. He said, you mind if we pray? I did not know what that meant in a Slimly of God church. I'd never been in a Slimly of God church. He said, come here. I come down there. And I was getting a little scared. I didn't know there wasn't that many people, but he was skinny. And he said, we're going to pray for you. I said, okay, hold on. I did this. I saw someone do this on TV. I'm ready. <laughs> they looked beyond my foolishness, and what I did not know was 
It was like sickum to those people. I mean, they had jumped on me, and I mean, they, they weren't letting me go. There's about 20, about a group about like this over here, and they came over there, and they just praying and praying and praying and just shaking on me, and I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this old girl in front of me, she, 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 she prayed really loud, and, and she's a little on the hefty side, and, and, and she had split teeth, split between her teeth, and she would pray, <laughs> And every time she'd hit a T, she would spit on me. I said, is this the baptism they talk about? I know her. I heard someone talk about a baptism. This must be it. And after about 15 minutes of being prayed for in the Slim League God Church, I stood up. I said, Lord, have mercy. I've been born again. I walked out on the porch and I looked up. I'd never seen the stars so bright. I never... I quit four major habits right there after that 15-minute prayer session, and I have never gone back. I was filled with the Holy Spirit that night because I had an encounter with God. You have to have this encounter with God. If you don't have an encounter with God, all you walk around with is a mental ascent. Well, I know there's God. There's, there's, I, I know there's God out there and, and all that stuff, but I'm telling you, Jesus is trying to help this lady because she's not good at relationships, because she's had, Jesus prophesied to her, he didn't know her, he said, uh, lady, I, I perceive that you've had five husbands and the fellow you live with now, not your man. She says, ooh, you a prophet. Talk to me more, talk to me more. He said, if you only knew, if you only knew who was standing beside you, you would ask him to give you a drink of this living water, the real stuff. The real stuff. If you get a drink, if you get a drink of this real stuff, this religious thing, this this showing up because you have to, all that stuff goes aside because you 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 you're. But ladies and gentlemen, I found out that you can go to church and sit right next to the real stuff. She was sitting right next to Jesus and did not know that's what she needed. You could be in church, and the very thing that could have helped you get set free that day, you could be sitting right next to it, but maybe you got a little attitude today. I don't want to worship. Yeah. Worship, we were made to worship. This is what we were made for. We have to worship. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. So let me, let me show you this with my time remaining. I'm going to give you a fancy word. Omnipresent. <laughs> The omnipresence of God is different from the manifest presence of God, okay? The omnipresence of God means God is everywhere. The Bible says there's, you're without excuse. Romans chapter 1, everyone is without excuse. They even look up into heavens and they declare, there's got to be a God. We, nobody has an excuse. Put it back up there. It, that's the omnipresence of God. But what I'm talking about is the manifest. Baby, I hit the manifest presence of God that night. And if you ever have that type of encounter, you, it will change your destiny forever. Because that's when God makes himself really known to you. So let me show you this. Adam and Eve in the garden, and, and the Bible says that God is walking with them in the cool of the day. And they weren't the first sinners. Uh, but the first sinner showed up, Lucifer, who had already gotten kicked out of heaven for sinning, and came down there, and he did not like them having this sweet fellowship, walking with God every day, and he's doing the same thing today. He does not want you to walk in sweet fellowship with God, so he's sabotaging your connection with God because he knows if you ever get this connection, baby, it's a game changer. So here we are, Satan comes down, they sin, and poof, the manifest presence of God is gone. He locked the garden, it's gone. They, they didn't get back in there. And God showed up to old Cain, they had a kid, and God showed up to old Cain in his presence one day. He said, Cain, you got a bad attitude. That's what happens when we worship, when we get together. We worship, God starts talking to us like, you need to correct your attitude. You need to, Cain, you better straighten up, boy. Satan, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Satan desire is to have you. Evil is sitting at your door, but you got to master it. See, he was getting all of that in the presence of God, and Cain said, I don't care. 
He walked out and killed his brother. And that boy never saw the presence of God ever again. He got banished to the land of Nod. You can get knocked out. Jonah, Jonah was, was in the presence of God. And God says, go over there and tell those people to get right with me. He said, no, I'm going to run the other way. Man, running from the presence of God could get you killed, Jonah. Three days in the well. So, manifest presence. Everybody say manifest presence. <laughs> Moses said this. Moses, look at this verse. Moses said to the Lord, may the Lord God who gives breath to all living things appoint someone over this community to go out. Watch this. Yeah. One who can go out and come in. I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to talk to you about in and out, not the burger. In and out. The presence of God. Go out and come in before him, one who will lead them and bring them out and bring them in so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Here's Moses looking for his successor. And he said, Lord, whoever takes my place, they just got to know one thing, how to go in your presence and then how to go out with that presence. Same thing, same thing with Solomon. Look at this verse in Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7. Mm, Solomon, my, oh Lord, my God, you have made me servant, your servant king instead of my father David, but I'm a little child. Watch this. I do not know how to go out or to come in. What's he saying there? Is he, is he saying, I don't know how to walk in the door? Heavens, no. He watched his daddy all those years worship God Daddy, his daddy brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. His daddy was radical. His daddy gave the largest offering on record in the Bible to building the temple of God. I mean, it was huge. He said, my daddy knew this. My daddy knew how to get in God's presence. Man, I remember sometimes when he was having church, I felt that presence, but I don't know how to get there, Lord. How do, I'm a child. How, teach me how to go in so that I can go out with the presence of God. How do, you, how do you do that? Sure enough, he started going down the road. One day, Queen of Sheba shows up, and she shows up over there, and she was amazed. Everybody in the world wanted to hear from Solomon. He's the wisest girl, wisest guy alive. Everybody, and so Queen came up there, and she saw everything. But look at this one verse she said in 1 Kings 10. When the Queen of Sheba saw his entryway, by which he went up to the house of the Lord. There was no spirit left in her. It literally took her breath away. I've never seen a man go in the presence of God like that. Young men, if you want to find a woman, a lady, a good one, why don't you just go into the presence of God? You want to become attractive? Getting in the presence of God will make you highly attractive. And all the ladies said, Amen. thank you. <laughs> David did this better than anybody because David, when he was uh, just a young man, that's why young people learn this when you're young. David was a young man tending sheep. He was playing his harp or whatever instrument he played out there. He, he defeated loneliness with the presence of God. He defeated depression with the presence of God. He defeated despondency with the presence of God. Whatever you're going through, if you're facing suicidal thoughts, give us one more shot at the presence of God. Come on in, baby and get an encounter with God and you'll walk out and you will be forever changed because God, God changes you. If we don't go into his presence, we have nothing to go out with. If you walk out of church today, how was it? Well, we talked about this, talked about that. Did you encounter God? No, uh, not so much. It shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't, we shouldn't, 
We, we, we shouldn't leave this building without having an encounter with God. You say, well, where do I get it? At the end of the service, we'll, we'll pro- call the prayer partners together, and, and they'll come up and they'll pray for you. If that's not enough, just kneel down for yourself and just pray and pray and, until you get an encounter. Or worship. When you get in your car, turn on some good Christian music, worship music, and just fill your life with God's presence. Why? Because you don't need to walk out of here without the friends of God. You don't need to walk on your job tomorrow without the presence of God. You don't need to walk in your school without the presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't go to Walmart without the presence of God. (laughs) Have you been to Walmart lately? (laughs) Amen, amen. I don't know where I am. David knew how to do this, and David was the greatest military strategist of all time because he would go into the presence of God, and God would tell him things. Hey, don't go that away this time. Another day, he said, when you hear the rustling going on in the top of the mulberry trees, that's when I want you to, I mean, God would download on David and he would go out and became the greatest leader of all time. You could be the greatest CEO of all time if you would walk into the presence of God and come out. You could be the greatest farmer of all time. I know farmers that God gives them wisdom on how to farm and they're farming better than anybody else because it's the presence of God. Somebody says, presence of God. Jesus taught it as well. He told his disciples, he said, I'm, 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 I'm giving you, go into all the world, but don't go out until you went in to the upper room. Go, don't, 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 don't leave Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. It's, we got to go in so we can go out. Somebody say, we got to go in before we go out. I got one more for you. How many of you, I wrote a book entitled Dealing with Difficult People. The subtitle I gave the editor was Dealing with Difficult People Before You Kill Them. (laughs) They didn't accept my my words. So they changed it without killing them. I guess it's better, it sells better, I don't know. Uh, How many of you, how many of you have a difficult person in your life? Yes. How many brought them to church with you today? (laughs) How many of them are sitting right next to you? (laughs) Hey, hey. I wrote this book because it's my seventh book, but I wrote this one because uh, I'm just trying to figure out the difficult people in my life. And I take you down to, if if you want that, you can get one of those. At the book table, I've also got a book out there called Mind Virus. It's been really, a really good seller, so. Um, the best, the best way that David found in dealing with difficult people, you know, the story, King David is anointed King, but Saul is King and it takes what 14, 15 years or however long before David gets to be King and Saul wanted to kill him every day of his life. I mean, you, you had the Israeli government task, I mean, the special forces looking for David. So David, the only way he would elude all of that was the presence of God. So David went down with his, with his holy man, old Samuel, one time. They're out in Ramah. They're having church out there, some kind of revival meeting going on out there or something. And Saul in his kingdom says, I'm going to kill that sucker. I'm going to kill him. Go get him. He sends about 15 guys down. Go, we heard he's in Ramah. Go down there and kill him. They go down to Ramah, and the, the, the encounter with God is so big that those 15 soldiers, they all come under the power of God, and they start prophesying. Weird. And Saul hears about it. Saul said, well, send another group down there. They sent another group down there. Those men started prophesying, and he sends a third group, and that group, all of them got into the church service, and nobody wants to kill David, and Saul is really mad. I'll go down there myself. You read it. He goes down there, and as soon as he gets in the vicinity, he takes his clothes off, and he starts prophesying. You read it. It's in the Bible. You want to know how to deal with difficult people in your life? Get in the presence of God. Get in the presence of God. You want to know how to deal with a difficult child? Get them in the presence of God. I'm telling you, if mama says there's a revival across town, go to that revival and bring that crumb snatcher with you. Get his attitude straight. Send him to youth camp. Send him to youth camp. Why? Because they'll encounter the presence of God, and it's the best 
way that you can raise kids is get them in the presence of God. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Pastor, I'm really too busy. I don't, I don't even have time to go to church. I'm sitting at home watching online. Here, let me tell you about Susanna Wesley. I was at her gravesite a couple months ago in, in London. And Susanna Wesley, uh, she gave, uh, they, they call her the mother of the Methodism, the Methodist church. And Susanna Wesley had 19 children in a small two bedroom cabin. And, but this is what Susanna did. Her sons were John and Charles Wesley. John started the Methodist church and, and Charles wrote probably 7,000 hymns for the church. And this is what Susanna Wesley, I mean, you think if you got 19 kids, you're pretty busy. Every single day of her life in that front room of that cabin, she had this big old apron and she would pull it over her head and she would tell those kids, now mama's going to spend an hour in the presence of God. Y'all leave me alone. And for sure, she, and they knew when mama was up under that apron, don't mess with mama. Susanna Wesley never wrote a sermon, never preached a sermon, never sang a song, but gave birth to one of the greatest movements in the entire world because she would go in his presence and come out with his presence, put his presence on those kids, and look what happened to the world of Susanna Wesley. Let me give you this last one. I'll get out of your way. When we enter God's presence, we must go out a different way. Ezekiel 46, when the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed feast, whoever enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate. Whoever enters by the south gate is to go out by the north gate. No one is to return by the gate through, through the gate by which they entered. Each is to go out an opposite gate. What in the world? The prophet told him, he said, when we do this festival this time, he said, those people coming in at South Gate, send them out the North Gate. You, you, I don't care. It's what the Lord said. You, you come in one way, you're going to go out the other way. You come in that way, you're going to go out that way. It'd be like you coming to church today and say you came in on the east entrance and Pastor Dale got up and said, you know what, today, I feel like the Lord told us we're, we're all going out a different way. You that came in the east way, go out the west gate you came in the west side you go out the east side why why i think it was a symbol because these feasts were supposed to change you you're supposed to be able to say hey i went in one way but i came out a different way not just physically but spiritually if you came to church today and someone dropped you off and i'll pick you up right here on the east side well now you're on the south side and you're getting all these phone calls. Where are you? Where are you? I'm on the south side. Pastor Dale said, go on the south side today. Don't, who is that Pastor Dale anyway? <laughs> Don't mess with Pastor Dale. I mean, he, he, he got Freddie and Louie. They may hit you off. Huh? Who, I, don't you know that I told you to be out here? You know, you got this half-baked. Let me go over here. You got this half-baked boyfriend. He doesn't love the Lord enough, but you keep putting up with this Harry Hyde for some reason. I mean, he doesn't really have a good car. He's got that old bucket of boats, and you go down the road. You don't even know if you're going to make it down the road. And that old, it's like a mosquito spray car. I mean, it's smoking everybody. And he won't come to church with you. And you begged him to come to church. He's always got an excuse. He don't come to church. Let me tell you something. Run, Forrest, run. Run. Run from that sucker. He's no good, he's no good, he's no good. I told you I would pick you up at the east gate and you're at the south gate. Well, Pastor Dale told me to go out the south gate. I'm gonna do what the pastor told me. Well, you tell me, give me that pastor's phone number. You know what, I'm getting an indicator that you're not my man. The girl, I won't have a car if you don't let me borrow your car anymore. I should have learned a long time ago, you no good, you no good, you no good. Get them in the presence of God. I met my wife in the presence of God. Joni met Dale in the presence of God. We, we were church people, the presence of God. We got to go in, we got to go out. Let me flip the script and I'm done. 
Maybe you're watching online. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm out. And to get in, there's way, there's a lot of distance between there. If you knew the sins that I was in, involved in, what I've been doing lately, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't let me in. No, the devil is lying to you. The devil is just like a drug addict. As long as a drug addict is talking, you know they're lying. As long as an alcoholic is talking, you know everything that's coming out of their mouth is lies because they're covering their sin. So if you came to church and the devil said, don't you get too close, you know he's lying. If you hear a voice, I'm not good enough to be there, it's a lie. It is a lie. God wants you near because the devil knows this. If you get in, things start falling off. That is why it's so important that when we come to church like this, that we worship. Why? You don't know who's sitting on your row. You don't know if there's a drug addict. You don't know if there's a very angry person. You don't know if someone's got some kind of a problem that is holding them down. I do know this, that when we worship, when praises go up, blessings come down. Praises go up, blessings come down. Praises go up, blessings come down. And watch this. And those blessings may not come down on you, but it may come down on that person over there that was thinking about suicide this afternoon. But your praise got them in, and God's blessing came down. At your house, when nobody's there, let the praises go up. When they come home, the blessings will come down. You go in. Pastor, I'm telling you, I, I can't get there. I can't get there. I can't get there. Well, let, let me tell you one last thing. Jesus said, you have that verse about Jesus and the camel? Yeah. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. Leave it up for a second. You know, the eye of the needle is not the needle that you think about, the little silver needle. No, it wasn't it. In Jerusalem, uh, to keep robbers out, they closed the gates every night. And if you didn't get there by sundown, you couldn't get in. Well, say you ended, finally got there at 7.30 or whatever, 30 minutes late, and you had all your camels and stuff, and you, they would let you in by the eye of the needle. It was a little place cut out, just enough space for a camel to get down on his knees and to walk through, but he couldn't carry his bags with him. You have to leave someone outside tonight to wash the bag. You're not coming in. You should have been here at that hour. Maybe you got those bags. Maybe you're carrying something. And God is saying, come, whomsoever will, come. Come unto me, all you who weary, heavy laden. You're saying, I can't get there, Jesus. Drop the bags. Drop the bags. Drop your baggage. Leave it out. I know it's scary. Leave it outside the door and give God your praise. Give God your praise. Can we do that? Can you stand and do that? Can we stand and praise him? I'm going to let you out before 4 o'clock. You're fine. <laughs> Can we do this? Can we just, I, and I know you may be uncomfortable with this, but it's a sign of surrender if you just raise your hands and you say, and I tell you what, why don't we just praise the Lord? Just in your own words there, you don't need a song. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I honor you, Jesus. Come on, you folk know how to praise God. Come on, young people, y'all know how to praise God. Lord, I bless you. I give you honor. I give you adoration because I know you're God and I know you're there. And I love you with all of my heart. Oh, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life. Lord, I bless the Lord at all times. Let your praise continually be upon my mouth. 
Lord, I bless you because this is the day the Lord has made. I'm glad you gave me another day. I didn't have an accident on the way to church today. Oh, Lord, I came up here and I wasn't even sick today. Thank you, Jesus, I'm not sick. Thank you, Jesus, I've got a halfway good mind. Thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings that you have given me. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. And I give you honor. I give you honor, Lord. I give you honor in this house. Oh, Lord, I was made to worship. I was made to worship. I was made to worship you, Lord. Oh, somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, that's good. Give me my hand clap of praise. He's good. 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 Ah, oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Give Jesus a greatest hand clap of praise right now. Oh, shake something off of you. Shake something off of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, doesn't that feel a lot better? And we just were there a couple minutes. Could you imagine what would happen if you spent five minutes? What if you walked out of here and you turned your radio on and some good godly music, and by the time you got home, you look like you high. You are. You're high on Jesus. If you're watching me online right now and you've never given your heart to the Lord, or if you're sitting in this, standing in this room right now and you've never given your heart to the Lord, give me one more minute because you need to get right with Jesus. It starts at the cross. I wish I had time to tell you, if you're not born again, I could probably list you 300 blessings that would automatically go into motion if you were born again. Just start with eternity with God. Just start with healing of your body. I mean, I think there's 300, 300 automatic blessings just for being born again. You're not, the devil can't destroy you anymore. But if you're out there on your own, you need Jesus. So let's pray this prayer. If you're in this room and you don't know if you're going to go to heaven, you don't know where you stand with God, you're watching online, doesn't matter what country you're in. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to give you control. Can you do that? All right, we're going to ask the whole church. Won't you bow your hearts, bow your heads, bow your heads with me, bow your heads in the balcony. You're in this room. You know you need to get right with God. We're going to pray a prayer. Say, that's me, Pastor Mike. Raise your hand, wave at me. Say, that's me. I need to get right with God. Yes, 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 yes. All over the building, up in the balcony, all up in the balcony, all up through there. All, there are a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people online. Let's all pray this prayer together. We're going to give you some words, but if you put your faith in it, you put your heart into it, life changes for you today. Let's pray it, young people, everybody. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, invite I invite you to be Lord of my life. Of my life. And from this day, forward, this day forward, I'm going to walk with God. I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. Please save me, Lord. Please forgive all my sins. Take this guilt away. You died for me. I'm going to live for you. But I need help. Tell me what to do. Fill me with your spirit. I love you, Jesus. And somebody said amen, amen, and amen. Let's give a hand clap to all of y'all. Made a decision to cry. Now, if you made that decision to serve the Lord, you can do two things. We're going to have prayer in just a moment. Some of our pastors are going to come up. If you have any unfinished business with the Lord, you need to be down here. If you've got this habit, come on, baby, listen to me. Somebody, you're fighting something. I just saw, I just saw this, that you're going to turn around, you're going to walk out, and you went the wrong way. You need to walk this way. 
put some faith on the wall and say, hey, I really need a touch of God today. I need a healing in my body. I need something. Come on down here, prayer partners. I need something today. Someone, don't walk out of way. Walk this way, and you're taking the power away from the devil on you right then and there. Now, if you just gave your heart to the Lord, I want you to do one or two things. Come down here and tell one of these prayer partners, I just gave my heart to the Lord. Or we can go to the information booth. VIP room. VIP room. Can I go to the VIP room? Sure. <laughs> Man. Y'all have soda pop? <laughs> VIP room, if you just gave your heart to the Lord, I'm telling you, it's, if you just gave your heart to the Lord, it's like being born in a hospital. You put in this incubator, and there's some people got to take care of you for a while so you can start having life. You need some help. You need some, you need some better friends to connect with. The VIP room will do that just for you. Also, if you're here, I finish with this. If you're here and you need to go to college, we started a college called CBC in Visalia that um, we have literally almost taken the cost out of a four-year accredited degree. We're partnered with Vanguard, and I was talking to a friend of mine this last week, and I said, Mike, you sent your kid to school. What's it costing? He said, I'm spending 31000 a semester. I said, Brother Mike, 31000 a semester? He said, that's just one semester. We've taken our whole degree down to $33,000 for four years. And, and... It's, it's a Christian college. It's a Christian college. If you want to go into ministry, you want to be a missionary, we got, we got more scholarships for that. I mean, we got a lot. 50% of our instruction is live, 50% of it's online, and uh, we have a booth back there in the back. And if you go back there and you sign up, and you're, you just have an interest in it, if you sign up, put your name in the hopper, it's a $3,000 automatic scholarship right there. I would do it. If you know someone, if your niece needs to go to Bible college, you put her name in there, we'll draw her name as well. Go back there and talk to them. It's affordable, it's accredited, it's attainable, it's close by, and we've taken all the problems out of it for you. Pastor Joni, thank you for letting me come. Tell Pastor Dale to love him with my heart, but he's buying next time. Hey, <laughs> come if you need prayer. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord raise his countenance upon you all and be gracious to you. Till we see you again, go with a high expectation. God be for me. Who can be against me? Come down here if you need some prayer. Come on down here. You're dismissed.